So Richard Lee Norris uh, underwent a remarkable transformation which included a face transplant and I think still to date has been the most extensive and comprehensive face transplant and what defines that? The, the amount of tissue that was included in this transplant not only included the skin from the top of the head to the clavicles and the neck area but also included the upper jaw, the lower jaw, the upper teeth, all of the lower teeth and the tongue with all the nerves and blood vessels that comes along with that. He had a shotgun injury in the 90s, a self-inflicted gunshot wound, and had undergone a number of surgical procedures to try to correct this uh, significant uh, high-velocity facial injury. And myself, as well as other surgeons that had been involved prior to my involvement, were unsuccessful. So after a number of procedures caring for him with conventional approaches, we realized that the only way that we could normalize his appearance as well as, as his function was with a comprehensive face transplant. Many, a face transplant, uh, is, although it is a surgical procedure, it's unlike most normal surgical procedures that we perform because it's considered research. So it has to go through a very rigorous regulatory process to ensure that we can select the appropriate candidate and the candidate goes through a very rigorous selection process where a number of professionals including clinical psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers, surgeons, transplant immunologists, transplant surgeons because the patient will be on lifelong immune suppression because you're receiving a face that's genetically mismatched to self so you have to be on, li on lifelong immune suppression. So the, the consenting process is challenging because you want to make sure that a patient is compliant and responsible with future care of that transplant and that we can essentially understand if there is un any underlying psychological dilemma that may affect the patient's long-term healing process. With regards to the matching process on patients, there are a couple of things that uh, are involved. Number one, blood type matching is involved. We look at HLA, which is a form of immunological matching, and we look at DSA, donor-specific antibodies. So that's essentially at a DNA level. And then beyond that, there are certain uh, virologies that we look at. We want to make sure that the virologies match, for example, cytomegalovirus, and Epstein-Barr virus, which is standard uh, matching mechanism for solid organ transplantation. The differences from solid organ in face is that we also look at skin color matching, we look at skeletal match, we look at hair color match, and we look at facial measurements to ensure that the faces match as close to as possible. I had rejected either two or three donors, and the reasons for rejecting these donors, the match was not ideal. There were some uh, questions regarding some of the virologies. And when you're looking at a person that's going to undergo a face transplant, keep in mind that this is not a transplant for quantity of life. This is a quality of life issue. So we have to ensure that the match is as ideal as possible. So in those previous donors that I rejected, the match was suboptimal. 